iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Michael McElroy and Alan Renee Lewis, welcome to iHeartRadio Broadway. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. We are here to talk all about Broadway inspirational voices. And I just want to say first and foremost, congratulations to you both on everything that has been announced and everything that is moving forward with this amazing organization. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's a wonderful and a really exciting time. So Michael, I do want to start with you. 27 years ago, you started the Broadway Gospel Choir, which then transitioned in 1999 to Broadway Inspirational Voices. 27 years ago, did you ever think that this organization would be what it is today? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I am grateful that it is, but it, you know, at the time, I just saw a need in our community and I wanted to fill that need, right? I, I love the theater. It's been a part of my, my life since I was very little. Um, and we were suffering during the pandemic. And we were, you know, theater folks, we come together, right? And so Broadway Cares and Equity Fights AIDS were created in that moment. And we knew how to take care of the practical needs of our family, our community members, but our hearts, our spirits were still heavy. And so I knew the power of this music, of gospel music, um, outside of religious dogma. Just the music itself has the ability to touch people in a way that most that I don't find other musics have that same kind of capability. And so I wanted to do it with a diverse group of singers because it was important to me from the beginning that we represent our community um, and what our community looks like and what we dream our community can be. And so I had 11 people, people like Alice Ripley was in that first group, Adrian Lennox, Billy Porter. You know, it was an amazing group. And we did a benefit for Broadway Cares. That's all we were doing, just a concert. And the response from the community was so strong. And people were so moved, and we were moved, that it became a yearly thing that then turned into, uh, you know, an organization. But um, it's amazing when you answer the call for something that is needed in that moment, you never know where you're going. Absolutely. You know? And Alan, with being a member of Broadway Inspirational Voices for the past three years and now about to take over as the artistic director, to have that mission come around full circle with the pandemic that we've gone through for the past year, do you see the mission of the original Broadway Inspirational Voices just coming back full face frontal to help our community during this insane time we've been in? Absolutely. I think it's one of the one of the craziest coincidences, you know, that, you know, we started in this way and in a, in a moment of transition, we are like, you know, almost back where, you know, where we started. And 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 it definitely is a reminder, you know, to me, it's, it's served as a reminder of of why we do this work, you know, why we were created and why we must continue to do this work, um, you know, be, you know, to serve this community and to serve, you know, the world. And Alan, you're a brilliant composer, arranger, lyricist in your own right. And why was it, why was it important for you to be a part of this organization even before you were offered the chance to be the artistic director? Why was this organization something that meant so much to you to be a part of? This organization meant so much to me. I mean, it really started early on in my life. I mean. I uh, found out about the Broadway Inspirational Voices uh, when I was in eighth grade, um, and uh, we were learning music in our in our high, you know in our school gospel choir. We were learning some songs from the Great Joy One album, and hearing the choir for the first time. I think the first BIV song that I ever heard was "Hark" um, from the Great Joy album, and it was the first time that I heard you know two worlds of mine collide. Um, which is the gospel world where I, you know, you know, when, where I was raised and, and musical theater that I had, you know, begun, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, really getting into around that time. And so hearing the sound uh, definitely felt like home to me, um, you know, and, and, and then over the years, you know, understanding more about the organization and, and what they do and, 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 and what, you know, purpose they serve, um, it just, I just knew I had to be a part. I just knew that this was the place for me. I mean, this community is the one that I wanted to be a part of. And Michael, it's like I said, it's been 27 years since the original concept for this organization uh, started. And it's now 
time for you to pass the torch on? Why was now the right time for you to uh, step away from the Broadway Inspirational Voices? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, it was the time kind of presented itself. There were certain things that had to be in place before I felt that I could leave something that had been my heart and my baby for so long. Uh, the first part of it was the board. We um, started to cultivate a board and we have an amazing board now that's really activated um, and passionate about the choir and advocating on behalf of the choir. So that was the, one of the first parts. But I wanted to make sure that there was a foundation, a structure to support the artistic vision of, of, of BIV. Then the second part was having an executive director, someone on that side who could be a partner uh, with uh, the artistic director. Uh, and we had that come into place. And then it was, okay, who's going to be the musical director slash artistic director? And uh, I tease him about it, but um, Alan had invited me, what, a year, two years ago now to a cabaret that he was doing of his original music. And I went with a few choir members and I showed up. And first of all, there were like about 30 BIV members there. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. This many people don't usually come out and support like this. So that was already something that would kind of set me kind of looking around. And then he started to share his music, anything from his musical theater work to his pop work, to his gospel work, all those things. And I went, aha, <laughs> this is the person. And I remember saying literally right after the concert that you are the person to step into this space. And then it became <laughs> a couple of years of, um, you know, knowing when to kind of broach the subject and knowing when to back off and give space because that's a huge shift. Uh, and finally, I think it was last fall that Alan said yes. And so we spent all of the time since December to now partnering together so that there's a smooth transition. Uh, and uh, he, he was the last piece, but the most important piece to me, that there's someone who understands the um, musical vision of my two loves, which are gospel music and the music of theater, and how to bring them together, how to separate them, all of those wonderful things. And I'm really excited to see what BIV 2.0 looks like, because his artistic vision though we share certain similarities, is very different from mine. And I'm interested to see how his voice, how his musical voice will then activate within our organization. So, And Alan, to go from listening to a song in eighth grade to now becoming the future of Broadway Inspirational Voices as the artistic director, what does that mean to you? I, I have chills just hearing the story. I mean, I am, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more honored. Um, it's, it's exciting. Um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's just a huge honor. I mean, Michael is someone that I've looked up to for so long, you know, even before he knew I was, you know, before he knew who I was and before he knew I was looking up to him, um, you know, and, and, and just to be able to step into this space you know, now like have like a full circle moment um, is quite, is quite remarkable. It's, it, I have no words to express it. <laughs> so I know this is putting, you know, the cart before the horse a little bit, but what does Broadway Inspirational Voices 2.0 look like for you right now? For me right now, you know, one of the most amazing things and, 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 and why I, you know, I've been saying this since the beginning, I, I am, you know, I was set up for success. Um, BIV has laid, you know, one of the strongest foundations, you know, um, musically, uh, uh, with our outreach programs, just with everything that we do. And so um, just allowing that to continue to be and, you know, continuing to evolve, you know, as a choir and, and, and you know, stepping into uh, new spaces and, 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 and just letting more people know about BIV and the work we do and, and our music, uh, uh, you know, it really is about continuing, you know, in the legacy, you know, of, 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 of a high standard of music, um, excellence in music, excellence in, in you know, service. Um, and it really is just a continuation of that. And I think everything that this organization does, not just for our community here in the tri-state area, but nationally speaking, is unbelievable. The songs in the key of me, 
the, mm. the opportunities that are out there for students to learn about the organization. It's an incredible, a cr incredible organization that has been built from the ground up brick by brick. Mm. And it's absolutely amazing to see where this organization is 27 years later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and you know, I want to really uh, celebrate the, the choir members and all the people who volunteer their time, because, you know, during this pandemic, we made a huge shift, right? And we went, oh, we got to go virtual because the music is more important now than ever. The outreach programs are um, more important now than ever. And how do we do it? And once we figured that out, we sent out, you know, whatever choir members needed to record, you know, they need those ring lights that have become our frenemies, you know, all of the stuff that we needed. And between last year and this year, we filmed probably now close to 50 videos between our outreach programs and our concerts and our benefits that we've done, you know, to make sure that the music got out there uh, and that our outreach partners were being supported in this time. Uh, and so, you know, that commitment to what we believe you know, is the healing power of music and how it brings hope, our three words are hope, uh, inspire, transform, because all of our lives were transformed by music, right? By someone looking at us and saying, you have something special and I'm going to foster that, I'm going to support that, right? And making sure that that music gets out there, especially in these times when so many people feel um, are, are challenged by what has happened in these past few years, that, that if we have an opportunity to lift that burden just a little bit through a song or through something we do artistically or an outreach program, that is a, a responsibility that we don't take lightly and we want to be committed to no matter what's going on. And I will say this weekend is the first time that the Broadway Inspirational Voices are coming together in person in what, like 15 months, it seems like. Um, yes. There's going to be a two night celebration concert that happens at the brand new island in New York City, the new park, Little Island. And it's going to be the 19th and the 20th. It's going to feature some of the most amazing performers. I mean, Jennifer Nettles, uh, Felicia Rashad's going to be there. Um, I just want to read Norm Lewis, Daniel J. Watts, uh, Shelley Williams. I mean, there's uh, huge names coming out to celebrate, not just you, Michael, but Alan taking over as artistic director as well. So what can people look forward to, Alan, when they get to be a part of this concert at Little Island? I mean, you know, this, it, it's funny, BIV's, con so BIV, you know, we entered the pandemic right after our gala, um, which was on March 2nd. Um, and days later, we shut down. Um, so we were like literally one of the last major music events, you know, besides the shows that were actually still running until, you know, they closed. And then, and then here we are again, you know, as one of the first, you know, major, major concerts. So, you know, if, if anything, I think people should expect, you know, to be inspired, <laughs> you know, um, they can expect, you know, to, to, you know, Michael has crafted one of the most beautiful, um, you know, stories, you know, through through this music that we're going to be doing, and 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 you know, I think it's a moment, you know, to reflect, you know, to be inspired, to be hopeful about the future of us, you know, reemerging, you know, back into you know the new normal, um, and and what tomorrow looks like, um, and 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 I think people should, you know be expecting, but also come with them uh, like a spirit of expectation because, you know, uh, I feel like everyone's going to experience it very differently, but in such a beautiful way. And speaking of the future, Michael, can we talk about what's next for you? I know this video is going to come out in either later tomorrow or the next day. So what is the next step for you after, after Broadway Inspirational Voices? Yes, uh, especially if it's coming out tomorrow, that's great. Um, as of tomorrow, it'll be announced. Uh, some, probably around four o'clock in the afternoon that I am taking over as the new chair of musical theater at the University of Michigan. Um, and my mentor, Vince Cardinal, uh, is there now. He put me in my first musical when I was 14 years old. And over the last few years, I've had the opportunity to go to University of Michigan uh, a couple times and work on a Broadway Our Way concert one year, a new piece I was writing based on Shakespeare sonnets. So I've developed a relationship with them. And this, these two moments happened independently, uh, but uh, I will be moving back to the Midwest where I'm from 
and re and accepting the cold once more um, to do what I think is really exciting work to really be in partnership about what the next generation of artistic training looks like. Uh, uh, we're at a critical point in our world and in our training and in our industry where we're really looking at what does inclusive practice look like? What does belonging mean? What does diversity really look like other than just bringing in students? What is the curriculum and our traditions? How do they either include or exclude us? And uh, these are conversations that are incredibly important to me based on who I am and my experience. So I look forward to being at one of the most, and I can get in trouble for saying this because I went to Carnegie Mellon and I teach at NYU, but one of the most ex excellent musical theater programs in the country, probably the world, where I get to explore and partner with uh, faculty and students to really look at what that future of musical theater training looks like. So I'll be moving there in August and uh, there for- I'm so excited for you. I think you are the perfect person for this position. You have been such a champion for new voices and the student population in the world to mm -hmm to foster that next generation of theater and musical theater goers and practitioners. And I literally think you are the perfect person for this position. So Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and before I let you go, I just want you to know that there's one Broadway Inspirational Voices video that I watch if I need a pick me up, if I oh. need a feel good moment. And it is Michael with you, Joshua Henry, and um, oh my gosh. I'm, Crystal Maneha. Thank you, Crystal. On my way from Violet, if I need a mood booster, if I need a moment of reflection, I put that video on and I listen to it in my apartment and I just have to say thank you for that mm. because it makes me just put in a completely different place. That's so funny because uh, we were just rehearsing it last night. Alan is doing uh, Josh's part in Crystal. Um, and so we're doing it in the concert. So if you're coming, I hope you are, you'll get to see it. And Crystal actually, as a part of my artist in residence at Little Island is opening the Glade, which is the smaller theater space on Thursday. But then we're singing on my way in the concert on Saturday and Sunday. So get ready. I'll be there Saturday night. I'm so excited. That's uh... Great. Michael and Alan, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations on everything. The future looks so bright with the two of you in it. And I just thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you thank for you having so us. Thank you so much, Sarah. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing.